In my last video I took a dusty old fan from my garage and turned it into a POV display. I created a PCB with Arduino Nano, 10 LEDs and whole sensor on it and fitted it on a 3D printer custom fan wing. The effect was fantastic. Today we'll turn this display into POV clock. Let's do it. In the past I was always using DS1302 RTC module. In today's video I will go for DS1307. For displaying time we would need only 4 pins. Clock input, data input, pin supplying power and ground pin. First we need to solder 5 header male pins onto that module. Before we incorporate this module into our project and POV display PCB, let's see how it works. We connect ground pin to Arduino ground, VCC goes to Arduino 5 volts pin, data input goes to Arduino analog A4 and clock input goes to Arduino analog A5. To use this module we would need two libraries. The first one is the time library. The zip file with that library can be downloaded from GitHub. Second one is the DS1307 RTC library. After downloading both zip files, we can import them into Arduino IDE. With the DS1307 RTC library come two sample programs. The first one is extremely useful. It synchronizes the time of the module with time on the PC from which we load the code. DS1306 module did not have that option and setting the time there was really awkward. The second example displays current time from the module and it gives you a good idea how to control DS1307 so you can use it in your own code. We connect Arduino to the PC and we are ready to run those examples. We have serial monitor open to see the outcome of both programs. After running set time example, we see that the time on the module was set. When we run read test, it continuously reads time and sends it to the serial monitor in short intervals. Now that we know how this module works, it is time to add it to the POV display project. Here is the wiring diagram we had for our POV display project. We insert DS1307 module here and connect all four pins VCC, ground, data input and clock input. Now let's find the place to mount the RTC module on POV display PCB. Here is the spot where we can solder few female header pins and connect them to Arduino. Now that is done, let's see the result. Here are the connections we did in my previous video. And here is the addition of the RTC module. You can see ground VCC data input and clock input pins connected to corresponding pins of Arduino. Let's discuss the code now. For starters, there are a few declarations, starting with libraries and then Arduino pins used. Finally, we have some variables that we will use to dissect the time reading into individual digits. Then we have digits array that contains bitmaps for all digits from 0 to 9. The dimension of this array is 80 by 10. Each digit occupies 8 by 10 space within that table. Here is that table declared in Arduino code. You will soon see that I had some issues with it, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Then we have a array that would contain the current time reading. At the start of the sketch it is empty and only the colon in between hour and minutes is populated. Here are the table dimensions and its Arduino code definition. So now, when talking about the code in the main loop, it can be divided into three major blocks. Reading time of DS1307, populating current timetable with that reading, 
and the last one is displaying the content of the current timetable on the POV display. Let's start with the first block. Reading the time of RTC is very simple. Those are the commands you have to execute and here is how you can refer to individual components of the red time. In our code we would need individual digits of the red time so here are the formulas to extract them. So how do you populate the current time table? In addition to table with definitions, we have a function that locates given digit definition and rewrites it into the current time table. In our example here, we take one and populate its bits layout to current timetable at position zero. Then we do the same for two in position one, four in position two, and finally nine in position three. And when this is done, we are ready to send the content of that table to POV display. So that was an original plan. We had digit definition table and populate digit function. Should work, right? But when I compile the code, I realize that sketch is running out of memory. I needed to find a quick fix. I did it by dividing the definition table into 10 tables, one representing a single row and declaring those table as constant values uh, saved in flash memory of the Arduino instead of SRAM. The populate uh, digit would also need to change as you no longer can access the data the way you do in case of the standard array. We use following statement to do it. We can address any bit in any row in two ways. Providing the index of that bit in the entire row, this is the statement in black, or providing the index of that bit within the digit it belongs to. This would be the statement in blue. I would choose the latter. For example, here is the first bit of the first row of digit 0. Next is the seventh bit of first row of digit 1. And last is the ninth bit of first row of digit 9. So with this in mind, here is how the populate function should look like. I am fully aware that this is not the most optimal way to resolve my memory problem, but this works. And that brings me to the question, how would you do it? Let me know your ideas in the comment section below. So having fixed the memory problem, we can look at the code in the main loop to populate current timetable. After we read the time from the RTC, we populate first digits of hours reading in position 0, then we populate second digit of hours reading in position 1 and continue to populate first and second digit of minutes reading into position 2 and 3. For sending current time table content to POV display, we have light column function which reads a column of that table and lets the corresponding LEDs. In the main loop we have for loop which goes through all 36 columns of the current time table and executes light column function for each column red. With code ready, let's send it to Arduino board and see the final result. The filmed result is not as good as the live one, but we can clearly see the time. Let's wait for the minute to change. Now let's try to incorporate seconds into time display. It is fairly simple. We just need to extend current time table by two additional positions, 4 and 5, and add another section in the main loop to populate those two positions from the seconds reading from the RTC. Also in populate function, when writing into the current timetable, we were taking dots or colon space into account. Here we have to extend this as we have two columns, one separating hours and minutes, and the second one separating minutes and seconds. It does look great, doesn't it? Before we finish, I thought I would experiment with different font types used to display time. The first one I tried was 7 segment digit style font. I 
I think it looks nicer than, than our original font. The second font I tried is this one, each digit being 10 by 10 pixels. This font looks by far the best. Which font did you think looked the best? This wraps up my work with POV displays. I might do one more video in the future building analog style POV clock. However, if I do it, I'll be using no pixel strips to make it multicolor one. If you enjoyed this video, click this like button and subscribe. If you're feeling generous today, support my channel either through PayPal or my Patreon website. You can find the links below. I'll see you in my next video.